welcome to the channel today's little vlog is about composting toilets it's also about spring cleaning and uh, I visit a, a little town called Yardley Gobbian strange name but a lovely little village hamlet I know I said town early but it is a very small village hamlet place but before you you watch the VT would you mind consider subscribing if you haven't already? You could like it with giving it a thumbs up. And you can also, also, you can support me in another way by buying me a coffee. It will go to um, improve my camera gear. So let's not waste any time. Let's just run the VT. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. The only thing I would say about it... Lloyd's starting to work out actually getting the right composition and framework is quite a challenge so i'm pleased that lloyd's here doing that while i'm just looking good on camera really discuss okay so first thing i'll just say is the introduction welcome to yardley gobbian welcome to yardley gobbian Yardley Gobbian, the village's name means rod wood clearing, where they were made or acquired. Henry Gobbian held the land of the village in 1228. stocked and very clean nice and local next to a hairdresser's Grand Union Central runs nearby the east of the village and in 1979 it featured on Blue Peter television series where presenter Simon Groom visited the breeder of St Bernard's in the village. There's lots of nice houses, many of them have got thatched roofs and some with ducks and things on the top. going to say one thing uh, I think you should mention the fact that yesterday was the start of the season for the volunteers and you want me to mention that but you've just mentioned it over to you Chris that was the, the third of third of April third or is it the third third of April was the first day for the volunteers for the CRT lock keepers and you know what they were a big help because the locks that we came down at Stoke Bruin, well, you had Epping Forest that was cut down north of Blissworth, travelled through Blissworth Tunnel, south of Blissworth, and then was getting stuck in the lock. So the lock keepers were clearing all that away. So well done, lock keepers, on the um, Stoke Bruin stretch. Nice fellas, actually. Welcome to the vlog and it's spring and today spring cleaning 
this is one of these vlogs which is probably a little bit different to what I normally do because I'm normally traveling around or seeing stuff or doing stuff photography talking to people bit of cruising sightseeing towpath walking today cleaning I, I I've made it on one of my vlogs, I think, I said, oh, you know, I'll keep the boat reasonably tidy. I'm not very good at cleaning the windows. Well, I've got to clean them when I was at Braunston. I'm not very good at dusting, but I do sweep up occasionally. Well, you know, yeah. Um, but today, spring clean. And uh, there's a reason why I want to spring clean. Well, because it's spring and... And the other reason is because it needs doing. And I've identified by talking to various people that unless you look after the boat, it goes downhill really quickly. And I'm going to find out where my shortcomings are, where I haven't cleaned. And things. Prada! And, um... Shut. So on to the bucket, warm water, and some J cloths. By the right, quick march. I'm gonna clean me both. Quiet in the rank. Quiet in the cheap seats. One foot in front of the other. That's all you gotta do. One foot in front of the other. Best my mate, left right, left right, don't matter to me. Oh, I've got sanity. Stomp dead, stomp the bear, stomped in. One foot in front of the other. You lot are like a gaggle of Singapore whores. And when I give the order, I will see you all move at the speed of a thousand leaping gazelles. With the jump, feet together, place. I bought 16 toilet rolls when I moved on the boat. I've still got some left. There's a useless piece of information, but, uh, you know, eco-friendly. It's not like I dry it out and use it again. You know, I do, you know, it is a one-use a one use item. Ish. Leaving the body. One thing about doing that, actually, is there's not too much hair down the plug. That's a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, well, mate. Not too bad, as it happens. So I, I kind of, I kind of keep on top of it, but yeah, you know what I mean. Clear, loud, as an order with pauses. Oh, that squeaks. Okay, so the urine thing there, because it is a sit down toilet, I use, I sprinkle some water in there, rinse it through every time I have a wee. And um, that saves me an awful lot of work. Also, Green bag. People have said to me about emptying the toilet and all that sort of stuff. Um, why don't you put a bag in it? Well, I said I wouldn't want to put a bag in it because it has a stirrer at the bottom. I found out I don't need the stirrer. I don't use it. And if I don't use it, then I'll bag the bin. So all my droppings go in there and then that's emptied into... The green bin. What are you looking at? Left, on. Orders. Look in. Lone tree. Three o'clock from Lone Tree. See, see. Here you see me doing my brasses. 
I like doing my brasses, but then it gives me the opportunity to talk to people and then people talk to me, which I can't complain about. But, you know, from Lloyd, then there was a subscriber called Susan and we've talked for a long time, 40 minutes worth of a long time. And the dog was clearly getting bored, look. Bless it. You're in your own time now. I've got salad for tea. Balls in your court. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Is that you, Stevie? Is that you, Stevie? Cleaning the well deck as part of my spring clean. Although I clean that more than just spring, I clean that about every six weeks or so. But um, nice day makes it easier. And I'm also going to polish the brass off the water thingy. Dreaming. The sun upstairs, I need nine pairs of socks for a three day exercise. What do you think I am? The centipede. Get around the peri track, you sprogs. Stop puking. Where's the chief in teapot? Stop puking. Stand still when you're moving. Force it over your head and make you look like a fucking envelope. sequence of me doing some um, spring cleaning uh, the music was from a mate of mine called um, well he comes up on the YouTube thing is Georgie um, he's got a few things on uh, on the tube we're in the mob together to be honest and he, he come up with an idea of um, of doing a kind of a military type tone with all the all the sayings that used to happen uh, you'll notice I probably featured in there quite a bit. Anyway, um, there's also, what am I going to do here? Making an omelette. There's um, a bit of interest in how I do some composting. So I thought I'd show you. And uh, a lot of my stuff here, you know, food scraps and, and eggshells, they go into the compost bin because actually that's not a bad thing to add into it adds calcium apparently good for the soil composting over the winter has been very easy because i add things like um coal dust wood you know all the stuff that comes from the stove that all goes in there and it dries out the contents quite nicely and within a week or two, particularly in the winter, it goes from contents of the toilet to contents that can easily be mistaken for compost. So it's never been a drama for me to do any composting whilst I've been on the boat. I've now got to concentrate because I don't have that stuff that comes out of the, uh, of the stove anymore. I've now got to concentrate on how I'm going to do it without that. But I'm sure it's easy, you know, it's cope. Uh, so one of the things that uh, is my combat indicator is the toilet paper. I don't use an awful lot of toilet paper, two sheets at a time, and then it's folded and folded again. So it just makes it far easier to, to compost. So when that toilet paper's gone, Basically what I do is in an area where there's going to be no footfall and this stuff has properly composted, well, I say properly, has composted to an extent where it's not recognisable where its initial source is, um, I just get rid of it. 
Now, some people will say, oh, you can't do that. Well, actually, can't you? I was talking to some people not so long ago who used to have holidays on the boats and all that sort of stuff. Now, we're talking 50 years ago. There used to be the bucket and chuck it. And that's all they did. It was just a bucket and chuck it. So, whilst I'm suggesting or not suggesting I am the most eco-friendly type of guy, I am a bloke who takes composting seriously. I'm doing what the CRT want me to do because it's about, I don't want to bag and bin. Now, I also appreciate that in this boat, by and large, there's only one bottom and therefore the amount of deposits I make in that bucket is about three gusting four a week. So after a couple of weeks, it's not full, but it needs emptying. And then um, I mix it up, which is a little bit of a harsh task to start off with. But then after about 10 minutes, it breaks up quite nicely because it's the contents of that that's already in there mixes up with the deposits and it breaks up quite easily um, so I think personally if you're a single person on a boat composting absolutely the way forward I don't have to struggle looking for a comp pump out particularly in the winter time when the boat's frozen in or you've got a duck on the front of your boat and you can't move for six weeks or the um, the the pump out machine's broken nor do I have to worry about uh, the problems of the else endpoints broken I don't have to worry about that I recognize that if you are family composting may become a little bit tricky um, but and let's also not forget the water companies, well, by and large, they're throwing raw effluent in the rivers and anyway, by agreement. So whatever I'm doing is a lot better than the water companies putting stuff into the water. I think it's um, perfectly a natural thing to do and no one's ever gonna stand on it, no one's ever gonna know but um, it's something that I am mindful of and I hope you understand I'm doing the best I possibly can in the circumstances. And the time it's taken me to explain that, I've made an omelette. All I need to do now is to put it on a little plate, turn the gas off, fold it over, Job done. Job done. I have to have some brown sauce. A large, a healthy dollop of brown sauce. And the end result is, how good's that? Well, that's um, half hour's worth of digging. And you can still see the toilet paper in there. So I've spared blushes and all that sort of stuff. But, do you know what, that's it, that's two weeks worth, give it a good stir, it doesn't smell too bad, to be honest, um, composty type smell, but you know, it's not, it's not harsh, you can do it easily, um, but that's it. And I basically allow that to the paper to disappear. Once the paper has disappeared, then composting done, really. Now, let's not forget also the chemical toilets, you know, the, uh, the stuff that goes in the LSAM, the cassette toilets. Um, the the LSAM points, well, the, the amount of chemicals that go into those cassette toilets is quite substantial. And the amount of water used to to dilute the chemicals again substantial um i just think 
for me personally, uh, it suits a single person. Um, if there was more than um, a couple of people on the boat, then you know that, that could be quite a challenge trying to get rid of or trying to allow that the the contents to to break down quick enough or I need a bigger receptacle at the front. Uh, but that's what I do for compost. That's the truth of it, in, in, in essence. Um, I'm sure there's people that are going to complain. But then I'm not using a ton of water every time, um, every day. I think it's about seven or eight litres of water per flush. And if you go five or six times a day, then that's quite a lot of water you're using. So thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed give it a go because i do all sorts of stuff on the canals and i deal with it head on i don't want to sensationalize anything this is how i behave this is how i do life on the canals in my boat sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's very nice summer's coming and it's my morale is getting better every day until next time, and next time I'm going through Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes is an interesting place, lots of stuff going on in Milton Keynes. And I also see some people with a duck on the boat. So until then, ciao papa!